so what we're going to do um, for this next unit, um, we're going to start to look at how we actually construct um, structures. So um, structures are going to be sort of like wireframe based in a way. So it has a lot to do with referential geometry and then sort of layering in rotations and orientations and stuff like that. So if you look at that little model in the back corner, that's not exactly what we're going to make. We're going to start off simple, but you'll have the gist of how to make something like that, right? So it's fairly complex, but you could do it so that it kind of like morphs and changes into different things so that you can test what its coverage is using your analysis tools. So um, let's go to, um, well, so let's think of it this way. I have a, you know what, hang on. Let me pull up an image so you can see what it is that we're doing. All right, so what we're going to do is something like this. Um, basically, the, uh, the gist of it is that we're creating a sort of like structural canopy system that we can start to learn how to sort of customize how we're going to map things. Um, so it's going to have a lot to do with like sort of reorganizing lists to get the right connections that you're looking for, chopping them apart, reconstructing them into different things. So um, the one you're looking at here was actually built in Dynamo with Revit, but it's basically the same thing. So um, let's jump into it. So the way that we're going to build this is actually based off of a curve, right? So, so like anything we're doing in this class, for the most part, we're trying to use as little modeling in Rhino as we possibly can, which allows us the most flexibility in, in the uh, grasshopper environment. So let's uh, start off by just creating like an interpolate curve across this thing. Um, for you guys, you don't have to build this context. I'm just kind of pretending like it's in a square, you know, like, like this is a south facing plaza in a, you know, corporate plaza or something like that. So it's not something that's mission critical to, to you guys right now. Okay. So after you do that, um, we're going to reference that curve and subdivide it into however, however many, um, however many, uh, I guess, masts we want to do. So um, in, in sailing terms, there's a mast and a boom. So we're going to have, um, like if this is our curve, we're going to have the mast that goes up like this, and we're going to have a boom arm that sticks out like that. So that's going to be the structure upon which we're building some of this stuff. So um, let's go to curve, or I'm sorry, params curve and reference that. And then we're going to go to curve division and we're going to do divide curve. I'll let you guys figure out exactly how many you, you want, but um, it doesn't really matter how dense it is, but proportionally let's go to something like um, something kind of like that, you know, so they have a good amount of space next to each other. Now, um, one of the things that I think you should be well aware of uh, is that, you know, if this is a curve element, when we start to sort of revolve things around it and change things directions, we either want it to be relative to the curve or we want it to be relative to a plane. In this case, we, I think, obviously, want it to be relative to the curve so that when we have um, an arm that's sticking out from this one, it's perpendicular to the line, and this one is perpendicular, and then it continues to revolve outward based on um, the curvature of the line. So um, for us, what we're going to do is actually use, we could actually do this, I don't know that we necessarily need this divide right now, but um, we're going to use perp frames. So if you go to um, curve, division, and you go to perp frames, um, it's actually going to do something very similar. Um, so I, I'm, now that I pulled divide in there, I'm not sure we need it. Curve division. So it's going to ask you for the curve to divide, which is this, and how many subdivisions, which is that. So I'm going to put that up there for now. We actually probably only need this. Okay, so what that gave us is a, a frame that is perpendicular to the curve at all of those locations. 
So we can use this to do what sorts of operations? Anybody? Hmm? We can we can use this to do what sorts of operations? Well, it's many words because you can do many things with a frame. You can use it for moving things, rotating things, extrusions, um, basically anything that's transforming. What, the attractor point? Uh, yeah, in theory. But, but that's not what we're doing here. Um, okay, so like I said, um, we're using this on sort of this construct. So those frames actually exist down here. And we have an axis here, we have an axis there. Um, and we want to do things with this. So what I want to do is rotate it around this axis so that I can go back and forth this way. So I can define whether or not it leans in or out. So um, what uh, I guess what's more important right now, though, is to get a geometry that we can rotate. Does that make sense? Because right now we just have a point. We can't rotate a point. We can rotate a line, or we can rotate a point that's going to create the line. So let's create that second point. In this case, I'm just going to default to going up a certain height, and then I'm going to figure out how to get it to rotate. So um, using this frame, we're going to move in a certain axis. In this case, the axis is green, which means it's in which direction? Uh, right. The Z direction, uh, or I'm sorry, the, no. Well, it is the Z direction now, but it may not necessarily be the Z direction in all cases. Let's, if it's maybe, you know, kind of going downward as well, and it's not on a flat level um, plane. So we actually want to use uh, this frame's y-axis. Um, so let's go, let's kind of do that working backwards thing. So we know what we want to do is move. So we go to transform. We're going to go to Euclidean, and we're going to do move to make a copy of this, um, these points, <clears throat> which are going to be these. Technically, that's correct-ish. Um, but we want it to be relative to this frame in case it changes. So let's go back to um, vector, or actually let's kind of work toward um, the translation vector. So we already know that it's going to need um, amplitude because we need to define a direction and magnitude. So we'll go to um, vector, vector, we're going to grab amplitude. So it's going to ask us for a base vector and uh, magnitude. So the magnitude is going to be a slider, right, obviously. Um, but <clears throat> in order to get a vector off of a grid, we have to go into vector plane, and we have to go to deconstruct plane. So deconstruct plane, what you'll notice here is that it shows x, y, z, just like something like deconstruct point, right, x, y, z, x, y, z, except when you hover over the X, Y, and Z here, the icon shows you that it's a number. But if you hover over the X, Y, Z down here, it shows you that it's a vector. Okay, that's very important to make sure that you're getting in the habit of hovering over the input and output uh, values to understand what type of data it's, it's either asking for or it's going to give you. So um, deconstruct plane is what we want. We're gonna deconstruct all of these. And we're going to use the y-axis. So now you can see that it started moving along the y. So we can go 0 is less than um, 10.0, I guess. And now we're moving up relative to that axis. Even though it's technically the z-axis, um, I guess I can, I can point out to you what it looks like if you were to change it. So if this was an uneven surface, right, 
then they're not going to be even curves, right? If this thing's on an uneven surface and it's relative to that curve, it's, it's not going straight up and down. It's actually going this way. So that's why that's important. Okay. Um, what questions do you have? Deconstruct plane is from um, vector plane. I'm just going to sweep around real quick, make sure you're all caught up, and then we'll go on to more. 